All the way from the start, I can feel it in my heart, like All the way from the start Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today, I've got a new tutorial where we're going to be mixing a beat from scratch. I've done this on the channel in the past, although we haven't done it in a while. So I figured it would be fun to uh, go ahead and mix this beat. This was sent to me from Stefan Guy. If you want to see him produce this beat, I'm going to put a link to that video. But today we are just uh, working with the raw tracks from his production session and we're going to mix it top to bottom. I uh, just loaded up the tracks just to kind of get a, a listen and a feel for what's there. And I did just turn the gain down a little bit on the regions just so that we have more headroom in terms of having some room on our faders to work with. Let's listen to a little bit of the beat. what we're going to do is just dive in and this is obviously going to be a little bit abbreviated because a mix is not done this quickly normally but i want to give you just an idea of some of the approaches that i have when i'm sitting down to to mix beats and just get a balance overall that's going to work really well for your two tracks let's start with the drums so i want to get the drum balance down and the bass balance down because those are such core elements in this uh, genre. So I'm going to go ahead and just mute everything but the drums. And I may leave that noise because we may do something rhythmic with that just to sort of set it off here. So I'm going to mute those. We want to mix into a limiter. And so uh, this will just kind of give us a little bit of a safety net in terms of not clipping the stereo bus. If you want a little bit more context on why I do this and seeing this more in action, I'll put some links above. But what we're going to do is I'm going to disable all of the modules from I Am Pusher. What this is going to do is just not allow it to go above zero. So we're going to leave that. It's very transparent. It's not going to affect the sound unless you really slammed it. Let's work with the kick, the bass, and the snare. Those are usually the trio uh, for trap music, hip hop, R and B, really everything that's beat driven these days, which is most you know popular uh, music. So let's just go ahead and get the balance of these right. Okay, that noise is a little distracting, so I'm going to bring that back. All right, so that feels about right just as a starting point. Again, we're going to do a lot of uh, effects processing and cool things that are going to change this balance a little bit, but it's important to just get that essential groove and just get a feel for the relationship of the kick and the bass, the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, the percussion that he has there, just all the, the elements that we have to work with. And now we can dive in, and I want to just kind of fine-tune and blend the kick and the bass a little bit better. I think first let's start with this bass because uh, right now it's just uh, a little bit thin. So I want to add some low end to that and let's just reach for maybe some R bass. And we're just going to try to uh, bring out some low end All right, 
right, that sounds pretty good. Now let's go and uh, I'm going to try something, uh, maybe a bit crusher, just to add a little bit of a grit to it. And this will help it translate to, you know, laptops and things of that nature. So I'm going to go to uh, 12 bit resolution. We're not really going to be doing any uh, super low bit crushing per se, but we are going to do some down sampling and we're going to mix this in. So let's go to fold mode. So it's just something interesting, just a texture in the in the uh, context of the mix. You're not going to notice it that much, but uh, just add a little bit of flavor. And then uh, let's just uh, maybe do some widening. Let's try something that will uh, retain our mono compatibility, which Stereo Delta will do that. Okay, so that sounds cool. Now, I've gotten this question. Some of you are probably thinking, well, why are you soloing this uh, instrument and kind of mixing the effects without hearing it with the rest of everything else? Uh, when we are listening to individual elements like this, and especially when I'm doing very specific uh, processing and creative effects, I want to know what's going on with just the sound. And then when we unsolo it, it's more about balancing and then we can make adjustments accordingly. But I want to get the core... Uh, character of what we're going after in terms of the effects uh, with it soloed. No right or wrong way to do it though. If you want to do it in the context of the mix from the get go, that's cool. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on with the kick in terms of the frequency information because I want to see that we're blending this kick in the the uh, the bass correctly. I mean, obviously I want to listen to it, but it helps to get a little bit of a visual indicator. All right, so the kick is hitting at about 50 hertz, and we've accentuated some more of this stuff going on at 40 hertz. But let's just go ahead and take some of the energy out of the bass at 50, just so that those aren't uh, colliding. Now, there's different ways of blending the kick and the bass. I've done a lot of videos on side chaining, which is really my preference for this, but um, I do want to uh, just do it a little bit different in this case. So let's go ahead and do this. The kick is kind of crunchy and gritty, so I want to clean this up a little bit. I'm thinking Maybe we'll just use a channel strip of some sort to uh, just kind of dial in something for this. Let's say maybe the SSL channel from Waves. And I'm going to filter out some of the lows because we've got some extreme sub stuff going on in the kick. I don't want to take too much of it out, but I want to get rid of some of that mud that uh, we're not going to be able to hear anyway. So let's just go to maybe, I don't know, 20, 20 25. Getting a little bit of compression here. Just taking a little bit of the crunch out. And now I'm going to do something that um, some of you may not be familiar with, but uh, you wouldn't normally see this. But I want to add just a little bit of atmosphere to this kick. I think it'll help the groove. So we're going to EQ this off. Everything above, uh, you know, maybe 500 or so, because we don't want any reverb in the lows. That's just going to muddy things up. But just to give it a little bit of a space here, and we're going to do something really small. All right, we need to bring the wet dry down. And let's try a plate. All right, so you hear that? It just gives us a little bit more of a punch and an impact. So if I turn it off and with. So 
sounds pretty cool. So one more thing. Let's put a little bit of an attack on it. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, let's move on to the snare here. And I'm just going to copy this uh, reverb. I like the way this is sounding in terms of frequency. Might just roll off some of this extreme low stuff. It looks very quiet, but we'll just get rid of it anyway. All right, so let's change up the uh, reverb. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. Percussion loop and the hi-hat, what do we, the hi-hat, I uh, just want to make it a little bit more interesting, a little wider, let's see. Just add the doubler and I may just octave one of these down. Um, just take the detune off of that one. That sounds pretty cool. Let's hear what's going on with this percussion loop. Might do some uh, kind of a gritty compression with this. Let's see, maybe this even tied ultra channel. This has a, uh, a compression on here called the oppressor and it can do some really cool things in terms of just slamming a sound. So it just really brings out that kind of tinny uh, snare sound in there. So that's with is without. We got a good groove going with the drums. Let me see this uh, noise little sample he's got going. I think it would be cool to add some rhythm to this. So let's try something like maybe the uh, Sound Toys Tremolator. This might do something cool. Let's just see. And uh, we'll keep it on eighth notes. So just turning the depth down and then uh, maybe add a little bit of a reverb. Just got that fab filter, that Pro R. That's a cool one. Let's put that on there. All right, y'all, so we've got a nice in-the-pocket groove for our drums, our bass, and our percussion tracks here. And so in the next video, we're going to do all of the instrumentation in terms of the leads, the pads, the guitars, the synths, and the vocal chops, as well as a little bit of magic on the Master Bus channel just to get us to commercial levels and get this thing sounding really polished. If you learn anything in the video, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing. Stay tuned for part two. We'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.